Hello, everybody, and welcome to today's show. I'm Zach Drew. And I'm Andrew Bellers. A lot to cover today. Uh, but before we get into anything like I do, I want to give a quick shout out to those who have supported us this last week. A, a special shout out to David, who has become a monthly recurring partner. Yep. I appreciate you so much. And uh, just for anybody that wants to get involved, uh, it's very easy. Just go to ZachDrewShow.com, click Donate. And you can go from Tithely or PayPal um, or send us anything you want to our P.O. Box, IGBY, P.O. Box 797, Decatur, Illinois, 62525. Yeah. And we've said it before. Um, I said a couple months ago that just to do what we need to do every month, mm-hmm. uh, I said a couple months ago we're about $1,500 short. So we, we count yeah. on an extra $1,500 of just one-time donations yes. uh, each month just to simply continue going forward with what we do here. Uh, right. So we have got more monthly reoccurring partners, praise God, but we still need about, well, it's going to be a little over $1,000 uh, every month uh, that we're looking to raise in monthly recurring and, and one-time donations are fantastic. They're wonderful. We praise God for them. Yeah, we're not looking down on the one-time Yeah, we're givers. not, totally. <laughs> but it is the monthly recurring that that's if we can count on, we know how we can build, how we can continue right. to expand what we believe the Lord has uh, entrusted with us. And, and, and guess what? If no money comes in or tons of money comes in, and honest before the Lord, and you know me, we've, we've, we've done this show now for about a year and a half together. Yep. I'm confident the Lord is in control. He is on the throne. He hit, you know, the, he has his acts of providence. He will uphold his nature. And Amen. if he wants to do what he wants to do, he's going to do it. Amen. Um, and so that kind of leads me into the topic today because a lot of Christians are upset that we're even covering this thing like the coronavirus. Yeah. You know, people are, you know, I, I saw one comment online. Here's one of many, many. It seems as if many people every day want the coronavirus to get more widespread and, and worse. Come on, people. I and mean, she's talking to Christians here. Mm-hmm. Come on, people. What kind of God do you serve? Or do you serve one at all? Just quick dagger, quick dagger. You know, <laughs> I mean, at least, you know, she, they're trying to, 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 to give rise to, to, to this thing. And, but the thing is this, how many people... How many Christians died in the Holocaust? There was, well, there's different speculation on this, but it was probably 3 million plus. Okay. You know, whenever Jesus talks about in Matthew 24, that pandemics are coming upon upon the earth and in Luke 21 and in Mark 13 and in Revelation chapter six, you've got to understand that it rains on the just and the unjust. Now I want to go forward with this that our prayer should be Psalms 91. Yeah. Because God can protect us. Yes, he can. He absolutely can. And we need to pray for that protection. But we have this American gospel that nothing bad will ever happen to us here. Right. And it's just not true. The Bible, particularly the Old Testament, describes several times when God brought plagues and disease on his people and on his enemies. And according to Exodus 9, 14 and 16, it was to make you see my power. That is a quote, to make you see my power from the Lord. He used plagues on Egypt to force Pharaoh to free the Israelites from bondage while sparing his people from being afflicted by them. That's Exodus 12, 13 and 15, 26. And this indicates his sovereign control over disease and other afflictions. Sometimes it affected his people, sometimes not. There are times when God will fight our battles for us. And there are other times where he has called us to fight the battle and he yes. would be with us. Yes. The word of God says that a fool sees danger coming and doesn't prepare. And I understand, Andrew, that these, do you think that like I wake up in the morning and I'm like, oh, I can't wait to talk about this coronavirus. And that's the point. I think, you know, there's this perception that somehow there's something for us to gain by uh, this pandemic becoming worse and worse. And I can tell you there's nothing for us to gain. In fact, we don't want that to happen. No, I don't. And that's what I understand as kind of a, a watchman that many of my messages are going to be, uh, well, 
unwelcome. Yeah. But I say all of that, and I want to say that that God is in control. God can supernaturally protect you in all of this. And here's the thing. Our prayer needs to be Psalms 91, where it says this. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will abide in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say to the Lord, my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust, for he will deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the deadly pestilence. Amen. Let us Amen. pray for this. He will cover you with uh, his pinions, and under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness is a shield and buckler. You will not fear the terror of the night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that stalks in darkness, nor the the destruction that wastes at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side, ten thousand at your right hand, but it will not come near you. Let us pray for this. You will only look with your eyes and see the uh, recompense of the wicked because you have made the Lord your dwelling, the Most High, who is my refuge. No evil shall be allowed to befall you. No plague come near your tent. We need to pray for that. Yes. But I need you to understand that that doesn't mean every time that is going to happen. Okay? In the same way, the, the book of Proverbs, a lot of these are... They're circumstantial. In the book of Proverbs, mm-hmm. remember, it says, obey your mother and father so that you may live a long life. Mm-hmm. Okay. What it's saying is that the Lord, that's wisdom from the Proverbs. This is how we ought to pray. Wisdom from the Proverbs of the proverb I just read, live, you know, obey your mother and father, you may live a long life. Well, guess what? There are children that obeyed their mother and father and a tragedy happened and their life was taken. So yeah. does that mean that the word of God is not true? No, it's wisdom. It's saying, generally speaking, listen, if you obey your mother's and father's instruction, if they are good parents and they give you good instruction, typically what happens in life is you're going to live a long, good life. It is wisdom that we are to, we can claim that, right. but it's not It's not saying because listen, like I said already, there have been people that have died. There there was millions of people that died of pestilence that were good Bible-believing Christians in the United States in 1918. Yes. All right. So all of that is just an intro to what we're talking about today. I need to get right in to what is taking place, updating, so that I can be a watchman for this generation. Yeah. As All News Pipeline reported, with Google's most uh, search topics this weekend, including names like Caroline Flack, Lynn Cohen, Amanda Bynes with uh, HQ Trivia, Google Trends, people were searching like crazy, Stranger Things, Fantasy Island, All-Star Weekend. Also, all these things are filling out what Americans are searching for. But by looking at these trends, you can see that the interest in the coronavirus among the general public has completely tanked. I seen in actually this screenshot of Google's trending searches below. So I want you to know that I have been asked by several people on several different uh, platforms to do a show on what we need to do physically to prepare for a pandemic. Now, we don't sell product here at the ministry. So what I have done is I have put links to everything we're going to mention on today's program in our description with easy links to Amazon to make any purchases that you need to. We don't have any of these things here. We don't have products, so it's all in our description. Things are escalating, people. 5,000 people are being quarantined right now in California alone. And another breaking article that we're going to talk about, a Harvard professor, another one, has come out this week and said that he believes 40 to 70% of all living people may be infected with the virus this year. Hmm. And and Andrew, people are, it's it's not, 
because it's not juicy anymore, the American public just acts like it's it's gone away. And besides that, it's not really uh, being reported on. It's not it's not at the top of all mainstream news. I mean, people just aren't hearing it as much, so they assume, well, I'm not hearing about it as much. It must not be as big of an issue as it was before. Exactly. Amid coronavirus, U.S. cities stretch to monitor self-quarantine Americans. Public. This is from Wall Street Journal. Public health officials in the U.S. are striving to keep tabs on thousands of Americans who have quarantined themselves at home after returning from mainland China to curtail the new coronavirus, adding to an epidemic response that is straining already stretched local departments. Listen to this. Did you know this? Because what we're told right now is that that 15 people in the United States have been infected, actually have the coronavirus, and it's very, very strange that that number has not changed at all for an extended period of time, even though, get this, 5,400 people have been asked to self-quarantine in California alone, Yeah. according to the California Department of Health. And hundreds more are self-quarantined in Georgia, Washington State, Illinois, New York, and other states. There are over 7,000 people being quarantined right now in America that have come from China. Public health officials are following directions from the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention and the State Department to supervise these people. Now, I do not feel very encouraged by this next statement, but many steps are being developed on the fly. States are using a variety of techniques to track people from calling in volunteers to make phone calls to sending text messages. Hey, are you sick? Are you sick yet? And using electronic registries. These people are separate from the Americans. I need you to know this. These people are separate from the Americans who are recently evacuated from the Diamond Princess cruise ship. And the reason that this is the tactic that they're choosing is because they're saying that these people are are lower risk than um, because of the area of China that they came out of. They said, well, the disease wasn't as full blown there as it was in Wuhan. So these people can stay at home. The problem is that we know now that the incubation period is around 24 days. That's so right. we don't. We don't know how rampant the disease was. We know that the numbers coming out of China mm-hmm. are not true. We have no idea uh, what the situation was when these people came out of China. Um, so I don't think that they're lower risk. This could literally be the type of thing that like 5, 6, 10, 15, 20, 25 years down the road that we are recalling back to this moment in February and March of 2020, right before it went crazy in America. Like, yeah. we could literally be on the brink of this. The book of Revelation in chapter 1, verse 2, it talks about how it, that these things are going to happen in a fixed place in time. And what that word means is that once these revelation events start to happen, they're going to happen very quickly, mm. one right after another. There's going to be a time of radical acceleration. <laughs> the word, Jesus said it. Do you believe the word of God? It doesn't matter if you believe me or not, or Andrew or not. I don't care. Please don't. Do you believe the word of God? Do you believe the written word? Jesus is the word. He is the entire word. And he said in his word that these things are coming upon the planet. (sighs) Harvard T.H. Chan, School of Public Health professor, Mark Lipsich, told the Wall Street Journal this week that it is likely we'll see a global pandemic of the coronavirus with up to 70% of people infected worldwide. I think it is likely we'll see a global pandemic, he said. If a pandemic happens, 40 to 70% of the people worldwide are likely to be infected in the coming year. What proportion of those will be symptomatic? I can't give a good number. He continued, others have predicted that the coronavirus could affect 60 to 80% of the planet. Yet the CDC said last week, Yeah. When only 15 people are reportedly to have the coronavirus here in the USA. When only 15 people, the CDC said that this disease that's spreading like a wildfire in China will eventually gain a foothold in the United States, becoming a community virus this year 
or next. And right now, the CDC in America is in an aggressive containment mode. What? Those, those statements just don't line up. Those are yeah. odd remarks. It doesn't make any sense to me. Why would he make such radical statements? What shorts? What data? What does what does he have that he would make such a big... It's 15 people. My goodness, people, right? Yeah. Clearly, he knows way more than you and I do. Yes. It's so much worse than we know. Listen, you know what type of data he would have had? He would have had the data a week or two ago, if not more, than what we have found out just a couple of days ago, that over 7,000 people are being monitored right now. Yes. As potential people that have the coronavirus. They're being quarantined that have come from mainland China. That's the type of information the CDC would have had that the general public did not have to make such a radical statement that we are in aggressive mode of containment right now, that this is going to become a community-based virus in the United States either this year or next year. What do you mean, CDC? It doesn't make any sense if only 15 people have it. They know something we don't. Yes. They absolutely. And I want to say this. And I wrote it down because so, I need to say it just like this. Because I don't want to divulge information I'm not supposed to. A friend of mine. And those who watch everything I do, you'll you'll be able to you'll probably even know a little bit more detail than what I can share right now because other information has been given. A friend of mine has someone very close to them that has a very important job at a major hospital in California. That is a chain of hospitals. It's huge. This person is the head over a large department there. I'm sorry I have to be vague. If I could tell you the, the, the blatant information, believe me, I would, but you just, <laughs> you're gonna have to trust me. This person is the head over a large department. They are responsible for the reports of people coming in in the ER with different diseases and viruses. This person even receives instructions from head departments of the CDC. What this person said was that the doctors are not allowed to talk about people with the coronavirus and that nurses are not allowed to report the cases. This is so that they can lie to the public on the actual numbers. And I totally trust this person's account. And it totally works into this other article. New York issues a gag order to police and EMS. No talk to anyone about coronavirus cases. This is just the most crazy. Like we learn, like the Lord, the Lord allows things to happen in patterns and cycles. It's like yeah. we learn even from secular that that history has a way of repeating itself. I believe that God is providential. I believe that God is in total control, and that. I've often said if we want to find out how God works, how he allows the world to operate, we've got to get in on his cycles. Yeah. He has this way of, and I'm telling you right now that what we're seeing, the gag orders don't talk about it. Listen, if there was a serial killer in your neighborhood and the authorities said that we're not going to tell you, wouldn't you be a little upset? Yeah. Somebody that's in your neighborhood that is a serial killer that could kill you. And the authorities say, no, 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 we're not going to talk about him. You don't need to, you don't need to know where they are. That's, that's information that's privy to only us. How absurd. In 1918, the great influenza where 100 million people were killed, the governments of the world did the exact same thing. They are now allegedly confirmed coronaviruses in, in Watertown, Buffalo, and Rochester, New York. However, New York State has issued a gag order to health care officials, police, fire, and EMS, forbidding them from talking to anyone in any form about confirmed or suspected cases of coronavirus. Once again, I totally believe that God can protect his people. But I also understand in the book of Revelation that if he did not cut that time short, everyone would die. The, the, I mean, the book of Revelation says it. Yeah. And I believe that that means everyone. That means that the saints that would be on the world, in the world at that time. Faith without works is dead. You can have, we, we treat God like he is, like 
we, we have such a, a twisted view of God. Faith, but the word says faith that we're, we can have all the faith in the world that something is going to happen. But if we don't, if we don't apply some type of works with it, our faith is dead. The word says, yeah, our, our works are the manifestation of our faith. You can say that you love someone, but if your actions don't line up with it, then you're a liar. I believe that we serve a supernatural God. And I know I've said this phrase many times. I believe that when we, when we, provide that natural he can do something super with it Mm -hmm. the supernatural god we can have all the faith in the world but our faith that works is dead he will do the super if we have something that's why the word says that a fool sees what's coming and doesn't prepare once again at the end of the show if you don't have time to wait to the end of the show we're going to get into what i believe that you should have for uh, the case of a possible pandemic. If you don't have time to listen, every link to Amazon is in our description. Take a take a look uh, at that. There are a lot of talks that there are signs of medical martial law coming to America, that it could be unavoidable with the U.S. military and the Center for Disease Control actively preparing for this event. You need to you need to remember that. I mean, this is medical martial law. That means nothing's moving. That means you are in your home. I want to read an article for you of what this could look like. Quarantines. If this was a medical martial law, quarantines mean no one in and no one out. That means no trucks for deliveries. And according to the analysis of the United States Transportation Network, performed by the American Trucking Association, if we are put into some type of medical martial law, nothing going in, nothing going out, where there's no trucks moving, for those of you that know the effects of a radical solar flare on the earth, that know the effects of what the world would look like, if an an EMP was struck over the United States. The EMP Task Force Commission have done studies before Congress. They have presented this on multiple times before Congress that if an EMP would happen over America, that they believe nine out of 10 Americans would ultimately die within the first year. This is a radical thing I'm about ready to say, but if the trucks stopped moving in America, you need to thank EMP. That is the type of scenario that we're looking at. Yeah. And, and, and I'm, and I'm going to get into it later. Can't, do you think you can survive? Do you think you can survive for a few weeks by yourself in your own home? When truck stops, America stops. Here's a timeline showing that uh, basically what would happen over a, 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 a one-month time period if this truck stopped. And help me read some of these, okay? Yep. The first 24 hours that the trucks in America have stopped. Delivery of medical supplies to the affected area will cease. Hospitals will run out of basic supplies, such as syringes, catheters, within hours. Radio pharmaceuticals will deteriorate and become unusable. Service stations will begin to run out of fuel. Manufacturers using just-in-time manufacturing will develop uh, component shortages. U.S. mail and other packages delivery will cease. Mm -hmm. And food shortages within uh, within one day. Within one day, and this is why because uh, they restock uh, the grocery store. What is it? Eight times in a day. In in places like New York City, that's correct. Right. But most everybody in in the United States, it's it. Where do we get the term just in time delivery? <laughs> so food shortages will um will begin to develop. It says automobile fuel availability and delivery will dwindle, uh, leading to skyrocketing prices and long lines at the gas pumps within one day. Without manufacturing components and trunks for product delivery, assembly lines will shut down, putting thousands out of work. Within two days, or oh, within two to three days, food shortages will escalate, especially in the face of hoarding and consumer panic. Supplies of essentials, such as bottled water, powdered milk, and canned meat at major retailers will disappear. ATMs will run out of cash and banks will be unable to process transactions. Service stations will completely run out of fuel for autos and trucks. Garbage will start piling up in urban and suburban areas. Container ships will sit idle in ports and rail transport will be disrupted, eventually coming to a standstill. What will happen within a week? 
Yeah, within a week, automobile travel will cease due to the lack of fuel. Within a week, there's no gas. You can't drive anywhere. Uh, without autos and buses, many people will not be able to get to work, shop for groceries, or access medical care. Uh, hospitals will begin to exhaust oxygen supplies. And then within two weeks, the nation's clean water supply will begin to run dry. But within four weeks, the nation will exhaust its clean water supply and water will be safe for drinking only after boiling. As a result, gastrointestinal illnesses will increase, further taxing an already weakened health care system. That's right. If the news announced tomorrow that a pandemic had begun in your area, in particular, your area, was at risk, would you be prepared? That's the question. Mm -hmm. Should you have to self-quarantine within your own home for a minimum of 14 days, the incubation period for this one is 24 days, and you're yeah. unable to go out to purchase food, water, toilet paper, paper towels, other basic necessities, would you be prepared to do so? With what's happening in China right now, underscoring why we should all get prepared to shelter within our own homes for a period of time, we see that many in China who weren't prepared to be suddenly quarantined, they're suffering. They're having a great, a very difficult time getting what they need just to survive. If this happens in America, are you prepared for that event? So I'm going to take the last couple of minutes. I just want to go through a list and everything. We don't do product here, so I just have to give links to Amazon. Mm -hmm. These, I believe that everyone, if you can do as many things on this list as possible to get re prepared physically, then you need to. The first thing that you should think about getting in the links in the description, pandemic quick kits. Uh, each one that you see on the, in the link, if you click on it, it's a set of three. So you get three pandemic quick kits, one size fits all. Um, and it's going to be basically a, a jumpsuit that's going to protect you. Mm -hmm. And it's going to give you splash proof goggles, medica medical grade N95 masks, two pairs of latex. Uh, latex gloves, biohazard bag, hair nets, small roll, ad adhesive tape to wrap around your ankles and wrists. Mm -hmm. So this is what, I mean, and this is crazy. To, I know it's crazy. Like to imagine this would be coming, but like if, if you're preparing for a pandemic, you need these. Also, you just need basic face masks, N95s or N100. They're in the description. Safety goggles. People are buying just the mask. They're forgetting that it can it can come into contact with your eyes. You right. need, they need goggles. Obviously, you need emergency food that... Yeah. And you need emergency food that tastes good. That's important. And like we said, you need at least two weeks, probably more like six to eight weeks. Yes. And I'm not going to tell you how much a listen I have, but uh, we have uh, more than that. Um, you need water filters. You need purification devices. There's a link to a filtration device that I have in this link that will filter 99 percent plus of all viruses now yeah. obviously it hasn't been tested on this virus so still most filters won't even won't filter out viruses mm -hmm. so regardless if you can still boil your water yeah. but we have incredible uh filtration uh, in the link in the description also we don't have a link for this but you need you need to stock up on your medications if you're taking something that's over you know that your that your doctor prescribes you need to stock up on as much of it as you possibly can and something that we haven't mentioned is that china is china is providing all of our medications we don't <sighs> we don't produce our own medications in america so if this really goes down um and china is completely shut off to the world you're going to need medications today. Look at this article. I wasn't yeah. going to read it. Co warning, coronavirus pandemic could lead to a massive global medicine shortage yeah. right here. So let's talk about the things that you need. Um, we have a link for these. You need immune system boosters, elderberry, elderberry gummies with vitamin C and zinc in the link below. Vitamin C powder in the link below. Uh, we don't have a link for this, but stock up on flu type medicines. You're not going to leave your home. Mm -hmm. You're not going to go to the hospital. Oh my goodness, you don't want to go to the hospital. Right. You need NyQuil, DayQuil. You need Robitussin for cough. You need even just things like uh, anti antiacids or, or anti-diarrhea stuff. You need a first aid kit in the link below, a portable radio in the link below, flashlight with extra batteries or solar flight 
Check the description. Purple nitrate exam gloves. Uh, there, It's there. Garbage bags and kitchen size bags. It's all there. Things that aren't in. The, we don't have links. So you can just go to the grocery store and get it. Things like paper towels, toilet paper soap, antibacterial soap, laundry soap. And you need to buy liquid bleach uh, in bulk. Uh, when cleaning your home, be sure to use large amounts of bleach to help kill any pathogens. Um, you need clear plastic sheeting. You need a lot of duct tape. It's great for emergency situations. Uh, you can use even new duct tape for bandages, leg splints, water bottle repair, makeshift tourniquet, cleaning ropes, arm sling. And here's another thing we don't have a description. We don't have a link for in the description. Entertainment. You have kids. Well, even if you don't have kids, you're going to get bored. Make sure you have different things to keep yourself uh, entertained. Mm -hmm. uh, good books to read. Uh, different games. Different puzzles. <sighs> you know, like I said before, I understand that many of my messages are not going to be welcomed. And as we enter into even deeper into the end times, um, you know, I, I and, and, and pray for this ministry, pray for even courage and strength for Andrew and myself to never lose the boldness, to never back away from even talking about the things that are hard to talk about. Mm -hmm. You don't want to think about millions of people dying. But you but I want to say this. I just I need to I need to say this. We spent a lot of time on how to get prepared physically on today's show. And the reason why we did the, the physically is because the last three shows, we've just been diving into it, diving into it, diving into it. And because of radical request, I took several minutes telling you what to do to actually physically get prepared. But listen, my goodness, no matter what happens to you, like whether you die of the coronavirus, I know this is so morbid to think about whether people around you die from the coronavirus. God is still on the throne. I know it's a difficult thing, but God is still in control. Mm -hmm. The most important thing for you to do in this life is to make sure that you have a relationship with Jesus Christ. Yes. Make sure that he is your Lord and master, that you have confessed your sins to him, repented of your ways and accepted the free gift of salvation. But I believe, and we didn't dive into it, this is a half an hour broadcast, that in these dark times, people are going, we're going to have the greatest opportunity to share Christ. And if I'm quarantined, if, if, mar if medical martial law takes place in America, I plan to continue broadcasting all the time from this physical location right here. Mm-hmm. We are totally out of time. I'm out of time. I don't. I don't know how to wrap this one up. We we're three minutes over, and I just want to say that get prepared. Make sure you just get into your word. Get into your word this week, and we love you guys. And uh, we'll see you next week. Yeah.